welcome to part five of our amazing part five introduction to screen casting with Python series. Uh, if you haven't seen part four, hop over and check that out. A little thing popping up there you can click on right now. Okay, that's gone. That's gone. Now we can actually get into the meat of today's podcast. If you remember, we ended part four by showing you this handy little uh, character counting, line counting, word counting program we wrote, we wrote. But now we need to actually show you how to run a Python program. And uh, actually, it's fairly simple to do. So there are a couple things you need to keep in mind when you're going to be running a Python program. And I think the very first thing we need to talk about is something that Ben has mentioned briefly, and he especially mentioned it back in the day when we were still setting up and installing Python. The very first line in your Python script, you might want to include some specific information, kind of telling the whatever runs this about where to find Python. And uh, it's really nice because you can just put a shebang at the beginning of a line, which Ben is typing there, I think. It's kind of hard to see on the screen. There it is right there. Ben, are you typing? I am typing it, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that's the, if you look at the first line there, you got shebang. A shebang is basically just kind of a special control character in a lot of scripting languages. And then there's a specific reference to a user bin environment, or short ENV. And this is essentially saying, check out whatever user environment you have to find the proper Python thing to run this. So this helps when you have different, when you have multiple versions of Python installed on systems, when you're writing a 3.0 script and it's gonna be run on 2.6 systems that might have 3.0 installed. It's just a real nice way to kind of let the operating system in Python figure out what's the best version to use and to just do it. Now it's not necessary though to have the hash bang. Um... It just actually saves you typing a little bit more than you have to. Because otherwise, if there was no hash bang, you could just actually explicitly call Python from the command line, say, Python, this program, this script. This just allows you to run the script, and the shebang handles, hey, Python needs to run this. Exactly. So it's, yeah, it, it's not strictly required, but it's real nice to have in there for system portability. You don't need to worry about specifically calling Python, et cetera, et cetera. But, moving on. The next part, we've mentioned this a little bit at video, in video four, is this if statement, and you can see it typed there, uh, if init equals main, and you can see how there's some crazy underscores going on here, and it looks a little funky. But it actually makes quite a lot of sense once you know what this stuff means. Those double underscores basically represent amazing global system variables that Python handles. They're not variables that you define, they're variables that Python defines. And init is one of those nice things that whenever you start up a program, this init gets automatically set, and then you can call it within your Python script. And then main is essentially just saying, hey, this is the main thing that's being run. So what this if statement checks for is if you have started Python and you happen to double click on this file, this particular script we've been writing to launch Python, then it knows, hey, I want to execute something within this script, but what do I want to execute? And that's where you put whatever you want to run inside this if block. So in our case, we actually want to call the function we made. And that's one way to do it, is you can see it's just typing there magically as I talk. <laughs> I just want to point out with this if name equals main thing, um, this only runs when the program is executed uh, by itself from the command line. If this program is imported into a different module, this code isn't run, so you could actually import this care count method into some other program that you were writing, and you wouldn't have to worry about this if name equals main thing, or if it equals main. And basically what a lot of programmers do is when they're writing modules, they put test code to test the stuff that they're writing in their modules uh, in the if name equals main section. The real nice thing is that when this is used as a module, the, the init main thing, these are variables that Python sets regarding the scripts that initially launch Python. And so if you're just pulling in a module, 
it's not a main script. It was not the script that initiated Python. And so this whole block fails because init is not main when you call it as a module. But in our case, if we do just call it straight from the command line, then it is going to be main and we want to actually call stuff. So what do we want to call? Well, we actually want to grab information from the command line. And this is one of the really nice things about programming languages from the command line. You can just pass arguments straight into a script on the command line. So like when we run this, we want to say something like, well, let's use Python to run our wc.py script, but then let's actually give it a file name to count the characters in. So like if we have a test file, like we showed you at the end of part four, we can just say, Python, wc.py, test.txt. But we need to grab that from the command line arguments. So this is what Ben is doing right here. You can see how he's got that sys.argv thing set up. Sys.argv is basically a variable that is storing a array or list of all of the things passed on the command line to Python. The very first thing in that list is gonna be the name of the script Python is supposed to run. So in our case, uh, wc.py and that would be at index 0. At index 1 you have the name, the, the first argument. So if we were to call python wc.py test.txt in the first position we would have this text test.txt file name. And so essentially that line is just grabbing everything in our list of arguments and then it's going to do something with it. And I know Ben kind of want to explain uh, string formatting. So do you want to do that, Ben? We can just kind of throw it in as a bonus. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to print out some information back to the console. Uh, we're going to print out the results of the care count uh, function. And so I'm writing these uh, string formats right now, which basically allow me to insert variables into strings. So, for example, this 4% S uh, and then percent path basically it replaces the percent %s with the path uh, that you put it in. So it's gonna say something nice like for test.text, you know, and then it'll tell you the number of lines, the number of words, and the number of cares uh, in that definition. So it just, it basically formats a string with variables to make it a little bit better at, the, at runtime. Yeah, it's really nice. And you can also do this with multiple variables. So you can have things like uh, a couple of percent s's in your print statement and then two different variables that you want to replace in and that's just done in order so the first percent s is replaced by the first variable second percent s is replaced by the second variable but now here's the real meat of the thing if you look down at that bottom line there you can see there's a lot of string formatting going on but the key is at the very end we're actually making a call to our char count file path method function that we had defined. And you can see that we're actually passing in the path that we grabbed from that sys.argv. But because this is a for loop, this will run multiple times. So we could actually say python wc.py and then give it like six files. And it will go through, grab each of those file names, print out for file name, and then print out the lines, words, and character count for each of those files. Which is always nice to make it fancy and automated like that. But this is the basic core script that will automatically run and grab file names from the command line when we do it. So let's go to the command line. Um, in order on Unix and Linux systems and on OS X, when you're in this uh, terminal program, uh, files need to be executable. We can always run our WC program like this, Python wc.py, and uh, that basically says execute program Python with the first argument wc.py, and then we could give it test.txt, um, and something interesting happens there, notably errors in our code. Ooh. <laughs> Should have tested that first. Um, and so that's one good way to run it. Uh, but another way we can do it is we can actually make this script executable and directly run it from the console. So the way to do that is we use chmod uh, and we make it executable with plus x. X stands for executable. And uh, now we can actually run it uh, 
just by itself dot slash wc dot py and that hash bang that we inserted at the top of the program will say oh this is a python program running it as python there it goes this applies to both osx and ubuntu most Linux distributions a lot of bsd stuff um, Windows, we're going to cover that next, but a couple key things to remember here is when you actually do call a file that you've made executable, you need to remember to have that dot slash on the front, uh, otherwise doesn't like it so much. And that, that's just a thing that could be tricky for people doing this for the first time. So just remember to have that. Unless you're really classy. Ooh, look at Ben. Uh, Dropbox, zipline, wc.py user bin wc.py <laughs> oh my gosh which wc.py there it is so now i can do wc.py test.txt without the hash bank so what ben has done is he's created a sim link into his path to this program we made so now the problem, the deal was that if you, before Ben did that, if you just type, w, type wc.py, it wouldn't actually know where to look to run that program. It wouldn't know it was a program to run. Now Ben has sim linked it into his path, so now it will automatically look for that whenever he types it. Yeah. That's the, the simple version of it, but Ben is such a nerd. As you can tell, Will was completely unprepared for me to do that. I had no clue he was going <laughs> to bust out the sim linking but that's beyond the scope of this screencast beyond the scope of the screencast but we just wanted to show you how to execute python script from the command line in unix or linux now windows <laughs> yes cool transition Gonna go ahead and open this with idle, the nice graphical editor that ships with Python. All right, so as you can see, we have it all set up to go here. And now there are different, there are a couple different ways to run Python scripts. Um, there's actually a built-in thing in idle. You can just go up here to run, and then down to run module, or else hit your F5 key. However, this only works if you are not passing any arguments to your script. So if I run it now, you can see that nothing actually happened. This is because in our script we need to get this file path input for our car count, char count function, and we get that from the sys.argv. However, when you run scripts via run, run module, nothing gets passed in through sys.argv, so it doesn't work and you just get a blank screen because nothing's happening. You can also just double click a file in Windows for it to run, but the same sort of thing, you can't pass any arguments, so you just get a quick flash, and that's the end of it. You could go in here and instead of doing for path and sys.argv, you could just get rid of this, move everything back in an indent to keep all of our happy indenting correct. And then we could just hard code this and say test.txt and then down here we can do our char count and instead of path we can just do that test.txt file. So now if we save it and run it, now we're not actually passing any arguments and it runs fine and spits out our test. As you can see, I messed up the print statement a bit, but that's okay. So we'll just go ahead and undo all that. All right, get back to that, save it again. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually run things with arguments. You're gonna have to open up a command prompt, which you can just go start and then run. And we're using Windows XP for this. Windows 7 is pretty similar, not quite. You'll have to figure it out. We're doing run, and we're just going to type in cmd here, so just cmd, short for command. Click OK, get a nice little window. There we go. And everything's on the desktop for me, so I'm just going to cd to the desktop. And now, interestingly enough, unlike OS X or Ubuntu, Python is already all set to go. So all we do is just 
the name of our script, wc.py, and then what our arguments we want to give it. And then when we run that, bam, it pops right out. And actually, if we just wanted to run Python in interactive mode, it's not going to work. Python is not recognized, even if it might just be an extension thing, python.exe, does not work. So by default, Python is not added to your path, if you remember that whole thing. If we wanted to add Python to our path, we can actually do that fairly easily by going up to my computer, right-clicking, going to Properties, Advanced, and then down here to Environment Variables. And this is a nice graphical way of doing things. You could do this via command line if you wanted, but it's Windows, so we'll do it graphically. Under System Variables, we have this Path option, and then you can just edit. And you can see here that there's a system root thing. That's basically just C drive, C windows specifically. But we don't want that. We know that Python is actually just installed on a C drive, so we're just going to add C slash, and then it's uh, Python 2.7, and that's it. Click OK, OK, OK. And then after a restart, So after that restart, python.exe is now in our path, and Windows knows to look in C Python 2.7 for the actual executable file, and then bam, fires up the interpreter, we can hop out of it, and we can also just do a python.exe version, and there it just lists that we're at 2.7.2. So it's actually really, really easy to run Python scripts straight from the Windows command line. You just need to type in whatever script name, and if it has any arguments, you just throw them right at it. You don't need to mess around with adding executable properties to anything. But, oddly enough, python.exe is not in your Windows path by default. You have to add that manually. So a little bit of a oddness in that regard, but for the most part, fairly straightforward. Just remember that if you are just going to double-click on a file, you cannot be passing any arguments, which, eh, some scripts absolutely require that, some don't. It's just a matter of whether or not you can program around it. Uh, but in general, if you are using arguments, it's still very easy to run from the command line. So that is it for our five-part crazy screencast introduction to Python. Uh, we're planning on doing more of these, so definitely check out our YouTube channel. little uh, annotation thing you can look at. And uh, check out the ziplineshow.com for all things zipline -y. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.